we have a transformation from R2 to R3 given by T of X equals AX, and we are given matrix A. We're asked to geometrically describe the range of the function. Well, the range of the transformation or function is the same as the image of the transformation, which is a set of all possible output vectors, T vector X, such that vector X is in RN, which in our case, vector X would be in R2. And the image of T, or the range, is equivalent to the column space of matrix A. Remember, the column space of matrix A is the span of the vectors formed using the columns of matrix A. So if we take a look at the columns of matrix A, notice how the columns have three entries, and therefore we have two vectors in R3, where the first vector is 0, negative 1, negative 2, and the second vector is 1, 8, 13. We can see these vectors are linearly independent because they are not scalar multiples of one another, and therefore the span of two vectors in R3 that are linearly independent would be a plane in R3. Let's take a look at this graphically. Here we have the graph of the two vectors in R3, and the yellow plane is a span of the two vectors, or all the linear combinations of the two vectors, and therefore this yellow plane is the range of the transformation which is also the column space for matrix A. And therefore we select the fourth option. And because the transformation is from R2 to R3, we know the output vectors are in R3, so even though we didn't need to, we could have quickly eliminated a line in R2 and the R2 plane, again because we know the output vectors live in R3. If we're still not convinced, we could say that T of vector X is equal to matrix A times any vector X in R2. Let's let the vector X in R2 be the vector X1, X2. And we know we can write this product as X1 times the first column of matrix A plus X2 times the second column of matrix A. So this is just emphasizing that once again, the range or the image of the transformation is equivalent to the column space of matrix A. All the output vectors are linear combinations of these two vectors in R3, and because they are linearly independent, we know the span of these two vectors, or all the linear combinations make up the yellow plane that we just saw. If these two vectors were linear combinations of one another, then we would have a line in R3, not a plane. I hope you found this helpful.